and, and dominated the game in the second half. And uh, we'll see, though, tonight because they're facing a good Apopka defense. Absolutely. Both of our teams are the victims of Seminoles. Power, Lake Brantley lost uh, back-to-back week Seminole. Huge district wins. They beat Lake Brantley 37-7. And back on Friday, they beat Lake Mary 43-6 in a game that lasted pretty much till halftime. Tonight, though, Seminole will not have Luke Rucker. He re-aggravated his back spasms injury. David Parks will get the start, and he put on a show last week against Lake Mary. Played there last year now, taking over for Seminole in a big game. If you're Eric Lodge, you got to feel comfortable with your quarterback, but at the same time a little nervous. He's just a sophomore. Yeah, and and, and the kid's got some experience now. This is three straight great three straight games that he's played in, and two uh, two games that he started in. So uh, it ought to be interesting Welcome to see what he to does tonight. Uh, I'm sure Apopka is going to try to get some pressure on him to see if they can force uh, you know some some uh, turnovers or interceptions. You know, bad play. Uh, we'll see how uh, Seminole holds up. They, they got that big front up front to protect that young Parks back there. We'll see what what happens. Without a doubt. And on the Apopka side, we were talking about it during pregame. If they want to win, they've got to have a flawless game on the ground because the passing game just hasn't been there this year. No, no. And, uh, you know, they got a freshman at quarterback, and, you know, uh, I think he's still feeling his way through. And, they're still trying to get him in sync and in rhythm with their offense, and uh, you know they're they're running a new offense this year. So, Absolutely. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of change in uh, Popka's offense this year. Yeah, uh, the quarterback we're talking about is freshman number twelve, Tyson Daniels. These are stats prior to their win against Stevens. He's thrown thirty-seven percent completion of his passes, two hundred and sixty-nine yards, uh, two passing touchdowns, two interceptions. So, he's needing to play the game of his life tonight against. What could be a Final Four, if not a state championship team? Possibly, yes, very much so. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be exciting, and uh, I think we've got that feeling in the air tonight. So let's, uh, let's sit back and see what happens here. Absolutely. A district championship on the line. The last time these two teams played was a year ago. For a spot in the Final Four, Apopka beat Seminole 28-27 in the 8A region finals. Apopka looking for revenge. Do not be surprised if these two teams meet again in just a couple weeks. Kale Tomlin will kick things off for the Knolls. I believe that was a blocked extra point for the win. And ironically enough, Seminole's been blocking field goals and PATs this year. So, <laughs> well, they, they're 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 pretty. That's pretty common in their uh, special teams uh, playbook. Absolutely. And away we go. And a huge return for Apopka as, apologies, we had the Apopka student section just throw a cloud of powder, and this wind carried right into here. And this will set up good field position for the Blue Darters, and Tyson Daniels leading the Blue Darters offense. They're only averaging 18 points a game. It's been quiet all season. They did beat back on Thursday, Evans High School 23 to 12. As it may be a little hard to see these numbers tonight, folks. Yeah. Apopka in gray and dark blue numbers. Excuse me. Yeah, dark blue numbers. Here we go. First down and 10, ball to 31. It will be a carry for Zeldrick Rogers. Maybe a gain of two there. That seminal defensive line was magnificent in their game against Lake Mary. Yeah, they, uh, they ran a little tight bunch there and tried to catch the edge on Seminole, you know. It's going to be tough to do with Seminole speed and Absolutely. linebacker. But, if, you know, you got the blockers out there and you got the numbers, you can you could be successful. Well, it's a good point you brought up the linebackers. It's such a strong linebacking core led by Ethan Pritchard. Just a sophomore, but just picked up an offer from Tennessee a couple days ago. So the future is bright on that linebacker unit. The defensive backs for Seminole, phenomenal game. It was a near-perfect game for Seminole's defense on Friday. We got quads out here, empty set. Second down, 11.06 to go in quarter. Number one, Rodgers joins Daniels back in the backfield. And Daniels will keep it himself. This is Tyson Daniels, bounces the corner. Tyson Daniels across the 50. No, they'll say he stepped out well short of the 50 at the 43 yard line. Where it's first and 10. Excuse me, Tyson Davison. I, I don't know where I got Daniels from. Tyson Davison on the huge carry. There is a penalty. penalty. On the 
field. I think we got holding. Ball's being marched back where it'll be second down and 16. Yeah, we got a holding call. On the 25 yard line. As coach, penalties kill a team regardless, but in a game like this, how crucial are penalties oh. that, that can really back up a team? Well, and when you don't have a big play offense, too, that, that, that kind of hurts you, too. You know, they're, they're more of a methodical type of offense. Second down and long here will be another run. No surprise, nowhere to really go. Third down coming up, and this is where Seminole's Short defense really we'll bring up a shows why they're one of the best in Florida. 14 yards for Apopka. Yeah, with Pritchard and Hampton on that defense, they've been uh, pretty good this year. You know, we've seen Seminole. This is our third time we've seen Seminole, you and I, Coach. They just keep getting better and better. Eric Lodge rebuild, doesn't rebuild. He reloads his teams every year for sure. And they're going to be such a dangerous team coming maybe two weeks in the playoff start. Five wide receivers out for Dan Davison. Third down and then 13. Two minutes have gone by in quarter number one. Let's see if we see a little screen here. And Davison will keep it himself. Nowhere to go. That was number 42 for Seminole, Connor Hobson with the tackle. The punt unit comes out there for the Blue Darters. Yeah, Davidson didn't really have a chance to set his feet there. I mean, it seemed like the pocket started to collapse on him right away, and, and uh, he tried to try to get out of there. As the punt unit quickly comes out, this is not the best place if you're a pop get a punt. You're going to give Seminole excellent field position. But excited to see what Apopka throws at sophomore quarterback David Parks. Fourth down and 14. Block. Nearly block. blocked. It's a high punt that goes out of bounds. It might have been tip, coach. Yeah. It's going to be great field position for the Knowles. They'll start inside their own 40 at the 35-yard line. We talked about it. Seminole blocks a lot of field goals. They get a piece of that punt. And David Parks is going to be set up in excellent field position for his first go on offense. Yeah, against Seminole, you want to make sure that you get the snap and uh, it gets back there and the punter gets the ball off because they're going to be back there in a hurry with their speed. So here he is, sophomore David Parks, Lake Mary transfer. He's had to play the last three games in absence of Luke Rucker. Came in in the back half of the second quarter to assist Rucker, who was hurt. He re-aggravated his back. He's had some back spasm issues. David Parks went 5 of 9, 76 passing yards, and two touchdowns last week against Lake Mary. Was that Lawrence he tried to get the ball to? That was Darren Lawrence. Yeah. I figured they were going to try to get the ball to him as quick as they can. He's their playmaker. Now, it's going to sound weird. He had a quiet game last week, 42 yards and a touchdown. And here comes that explosive running game for Seminole. It is a deep running back room as a unit. They ran the ball 29 times for nearly 200 yards and three touchdowns last week. As just like that, it is third down and five. got to imagine this is four down territory for Coach Lodge. Oh, yeah, for sure. Two wide receivers to the top of your screen. Parks now has, no, he's going to get sacked. Will they say he throw it or was he down? I think the official's calling him down there. And they will say he was I'll down. I believe that was number 33, Kayvon Call, the three-star UCF commit with the sack there. That guy's excuses with numbers tonight. Apopka's got <laughs> those dark numbers, and it's really hard I to think see. It, I think it was Kevin Call that made the tackle. Well, your eyes are much younger than mine. I've got 20-20 so. vision, so I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll carry the spotting duties tonight. Fourth down and 13 for Seminole. Looks like Parks will right, back it up. And, it. Yep. And he's punted for Seminole a couple times this year, and, oh, this is going to land be beautifully. Lawrence will pick it up, and... Apopka will be pinned back in the shadow of their own end zone. We will step aside for a quick break right here on VS in Orlando. Stay tuned. We're all trying to get somewhere. But no matter what, no matter where we're going, we never forget what matters most.
Welcome back here to Apopka High School. 0-0 is our score in a oh-so-important district championship game. First down for Apopka. They are pinned back deep and just a little breathing room there. Alex and Bernoni, Dave Delfiaco with you. Coach, Apopka's defense came out sharp, and now their offense needs to return the favor on their second go on offense. Yeah, well, like, you know, we talked about at the beginning, Apopka does have a pretty good defense, and they don't give up many points. So, uh, and, and that's on both teams, you know. So I think we might see a pretty good defensive battle tonight. Well, I hope it's not like 3 nothing. That'd be <laughs> too good. But, yeah, absolutely, these two defenses are the – for Seminole, it's odd to say the defense may be the strength of their team, but they're so flawless on that side of the football. Well, and I also think it's going to be a field possession game as well. You know? Absolutely. As third down comes up just like that, and Virtually no gain on the, play. We'll bring up the Blue Darters are pretty pinned back in their own end zone. Ball at the – Six yard line, 7.05 to go in quarter number one. They kind of were in that uh, heavier looking offensive look where they were going to grind the ball out. Now they're going to bring in a few receivers and spread it out a little bit. Four wide receivers to the bottom of your screen, one to the top. You talked about earlier, maybe a screen play on their last third down. We'll see. It's going to be another quarterback one here draw. for Davison. And this goes nowhere. That seminal defensive line is a brick wall again. Punt unit comes out for Apopka. Short run by Apopka. Picks up a couple of yards. It'll bring up fourth down. Well, I'm going to assume the punt unit comes out, Coach. No oh. one's really sh Oh, we got a penalty, actually. Face mask. A face Anybody mask on Seminole. Face mask on Seminole. So the chains quickly move just like that. Yeah, that, hurt, that hurts you when you have a team sitting back there and you got fourth down and then you commit a uh, face mask. And you had to feel pretty good the last time you were out there if you're summoned on the punch where you blocked it. You might have been able to send the house, and I think we've got a water break. First quarter water so we break. do. We will step aside another minute. Yeah, we'll take a quick break. 6.23 to go in quarter. Number one right here. Critical face mask penalty negates a fourth down for Apopka as they'll get a fresh set of downs now. First down, 10 ball at the 26 yard line. Alex Zimbanoni, Dave Delfiaca with you guys for a huge district championship matchup between the Blue Darters of Apopka and the Knowles of Seminole. Will be another run here. Nice hole right there, Alex, right at the middle. Oh, the ball came free. Seminole says they have it, Coach. Looks like they'll rule the runner down. As that was Zeldrick Roberts on the carry. He's had a fantastic season as a senior, averaging four yards a carry. Six rushing touchdowns. Of course, these are the stats prior to their victory against Evans back on Friday. As Apopka came out in that game pretty slow, they trailed at halftime. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they quickly opened the door, so they're looking for a much better start oh, against yeah. Seminole. You can't afford a slow start against a team like the Knolls. No, no, because no. they're going to start fast usually. So all the games that we've covered, they've been fast. They've start, I think that was the first time we've seen a three and out for Seminole on their opening drive. First down and 10, ball at the 36-yard line. And it will be another carry here for Rodgers. Not much there that no. time. This runs in, keeps running into brick walls, coach. <laughs> Running play against one oh, they had a nice little hold over the last one. Second and nine from the 38-yard line. 
4.51 to go in quarter number one. Winner of this one will pretty much lock up the one spot in the four metro for the Florida High School State playoffs. In the Orlando region, I got to imagine whoever loses this game will take second place. Yes. Not too bad. But home field advantage, very important in football nowadays, especially in high school football. And it's going to be a pass here, a screen. This one is caught. This is Roberts making people miss all the way down to the 34-yard line. A huge play for the Blue Darters. Just checking to see if there was any flags because there were some linemen downfield there. Looks like no flags. Apopka moving quickly. That was Zeldrick Rogers, Roberts on the reception. Yeah, Seminole had their ears pinned up front, and they were coming, and they caught him. And just like that, a flag. There was movement on that line, I believe. Illegal procedure on a And just like that, a great play will followed by a penalty. Yep. 15. These are the situation a Popka can't get in with their offense. So now after that huge play from Zeldrick Roberts on the catch, it's now first down and 15 from the 37-yard line. Just under four minutes to go in quarter number one. Three wide receivers to the bottom of your screen. And it will be another carry for Davison. Nowhere to go. That's Preston Watson on the tackle for a loss. He had a heck of a game back on Friday against the Rams. Second down and 17. As that defensive line was just waiting again for Apopka's run game. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to stop Apopka's uh, offense here if you're Seminole coach. Yeah. Well, they, you know, but there they hit them with the little pass. They got to kind of, they got to mix it up a little bit. They just can't run right at them because they're, they're just, you know, they're just too tough up front to do that to. You're going to have to mix in some other, other stuff to keep them, you know, off balance. Second down and 17 now for Apopka. Another carry there for Roberts. Nowhere to go. That's Preston Watson again. Another huge tackle for a loss. It's third and 20. Well, the thing is, is they're getting pressure right on the mesh point of the football when he's trying to hand the ball off, and, and, uh, and they're stuffing it. From the Seminole 42 I'm not sure if he's trying to read that or not. It's hard to tell from here. But they're getting such good pressure up front. It's kind of hard to... Uh, Hard to even read it when you get hit on their mesh point. Absolutely, and on these third down and longs, it's been Davidson who's, who's taken it and run with the football in these QB draws. Four, four wide receivers at the bottom of your screen, and That's he'll keep it again. Davidson, get back to the original first down marker. He'll set up a fourth down and 10, and you maybe feel a little more comfortable going for it. For yeah. It'll bring up fourth down, and looks like right at 10. Not sure what the type of kicker they got. That's a that's a pretty good size, uh, lengthy field goal there. That'd be about a 49 yard, and it looks like they will stay out there. As there's a minute 40 to go in quarter number one. As you might actually see uh, Apopka's head coach, Jeff Rolson, call a timeout if they don't get this playoff in time. We've seen a tons of delay game penalties this year. Well, I think also Popka's trying to work the clock and keep Seminole's offense off the field. As here we go, fourth down and 10 for the Blue Darters. And I believe Jeff Rolson will cash in a timeout, and he does. Looks like Popka wants to talk things over for a huge fourth down coming up. We will step aside with them. Stay tuned right here on the Varsity Sports Network Orlando channel. Searching for meaning in a relentless world, always connected, but somehow alone, trapped by illusion. We offer another path where the battle to belong begins. Awakened by a calling, united by the cause you fight for, no one can take away what it means to be among the few, the proud, the marine.
fourth down and 10 for Apopka. 108 to go in quarter. Number one, Alex and Bernoni. Dave Del Fiaco with you. Come out of the timeout. One minute, eight seconds left. As interesting, I'm about to up say, there. interested yeah. to see what Jeff Rolson talked about during that timeout. And Davison looks like they're going to try to run a wheel route here. Incomplete. Looks like Davison led his running back a little too far on that play. Yeah. And also Jordan Perkins was following him like a hawk, so <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't have lasted long in that play, and it's a quick turnover on downs. In a, in a weird way, they do flip the field from where they originally started, though. Yeah, yeah they did. <laughs> if there's any consolation. And, you know, as, as much as you keep the Seminoles' offense off the field and keep them out of the end zone, the better off you are you if know, you're uh, a Popka. Coach, these big uh, games like this, of course, you coach forever. What is the most important thing you emphasize in a game like this to your team? Well, you know, you gotta you gotta stay poised, and you gotta know that you know sometimes there's gonna be some bad things that happen. You just gotta keep playing, no matter what. You know, it's um, that's kind of the key with with some of these games like that. And, uh, and they build character, you know, and uh, and it's something big to go into the playoffs with, especially if you win a game. Absolutely, second down and five. As Parks now has to step into the pocket, he'll let this one fly across the middle of the field. Throws behind his favorite target, Darren Goldie Lawrence, third down. Parks looks a little uncomfortable throwing the football tonight. Just to start, I'm sure. Of course, this is not an ideal opponent to go ahead and play. Yeah. On a Tuesday night after you had a big win, this is going to be maybe a trap game mm -hmm. in the mind of David Parks. Well, and, you know, I watched him in the games he played, and he looked real good. Well, same here. Yeah, he torched Lake Mary as it's going to be a screen pass. Lawrence trying to keep those feet moving. He'll get pushed out of bounds, maybe a gain of two. Fourth down and three coming up. That might be the final play of the, of the first quarter as there's under 20 seconds to go. We'll see what Eric Lodge wants to do here. As there's now under 10 seconds. try to draw him off sides and shift into that little pooch punt formation. They try to draw them off sides. And I think that's going to be it, Coach. Yeah, triple zero is on the clock, and that's it for the first quarter. So a huge fourth down awaits Seminole to kick things off in quarter number two. It is a defensive battle. So far, you're not surprised nope. by it. Nope, not at all. And we'll see what these offenses can try and do to collect points. We will see after this quick break right here on Varsity Sports Network. Sharing the road is everyone's responsibility. Commercial vehicles don't maneuver like passenger vehicles and can't stop quickly. Large trucks and buses have a nose zone. Blind spots in front, behind, and on both sides of the vehicle. Stay out of the nose zone and never tailgate. Always pass a commercial vehicle on the left for best visibility. And watch for wide turns. Give them extra space. Find out more ways to stay safe. Share the road, Florida, and arrive alive. And welcome back here to Apopka High School. 0-0 is our score after one quarter. Fourth down coming up, and it looks like Eric Lodge is going to send the punt unit out there. Don't Your eyes aren't deceiving you. David Parks is also the punter for Seminole. So he's got his hands full tonight, handling the offense and part of special teams. Alex Bernoni, Dave Del Fiaco with you. Looks like Apopka coach wants to send the house on this one. Solid punt from Parks. It's going to be a line driver. Takes a solid bounce. And Apopka's going to go ahead and return it. A beautiful return out to around the 45-yard line. Really was only 12 yards on the change of possession there. So that really goes into Apopka's favor. Starting at the 44-yard line. And we'll see what their offense can do. That was number 28, Antoine Robinson on the punt return. He's had a fantastic season on defense. But now it's the Apopka's offense's turn. They really haven't got anything going. They were helped on offense with a face mask penalty on Seminole. And the uh, possession kind of dried up after that. Yeah. 
Well, they did get that nice little pass play over the middle. Oh, they did. I forgot about that. (laughs) Which, because of the face mask penalty. Yeah. Yeah, which which (laughs) continued to drive, yeah. And another flag comes in. Penalty on the field. And we're sorry if you guys can hear this wind. It is windy up here tonight. Yeah. A nice breeze will take it, but yeah. It feels good, but. (laughs) Absolutely. It was very hot down there during warm-ups and our first sideline warning of the game on Seminole. Sideline warning against Seminole. Those exciting young men a little too close to the field. So first down and 10 ball at the 44-yard line, 11.46 to go in quarter. Number two. Both teams have unofficially locked themselves spots in the playoffs. And Roberts, again, nowhere to go. Helmet comes off. We'll see whose helmet. That's number eight on Seminole, Inside, Dion Campbell, off. whose helmet came off. He's going to have to step aside for a next play. Second down and ten from the Apopka. Yeah, again, that, that penetration by Seminole. As they have just been so dominant. doesn't matter what type of offense they're going to be facing for that Seminole defense. They'll make you pay every time. And they've seen quite a quite – a couple of uh, different styles of play. We saw Treasure Coast, who runs kind of a single, a single wing offense. Would you say? Yes. And then Deland, they also played mm-hmm. Rick Darlington's types of offense. Lake Mary runs an air raid. Of course, you run the option. Mm-hmm. So they've seen just about every type of offense you can think of. And Davison will keep it here. Ball comes free, and it rolls out of bounds. A near disastrous play. That was Connor Hobson, who was on a beeline for the football. As a freshman mistake there from the quarterback. Yeah, yeah. Got to tighten down on that football going around that corner. Well, I've got to imagine if you're a freshman quarterback who's in a run-heavy offense, that's probably the most important thing you have to do to be successful. Yeah. And, and Seminole right now, are, they're not fearing Apopka to throw the ball. No. They're just <laughs> pinning their ears back, and they're coming downhill, and, and they're really forcing Sem- or Apopka to, to do something other than run the football, and they're, they're going to have to, to be able to do some other things other than just running the football here. Well, it's another third and long, and they're going to have to make them force them to throw the football every time, it feels like, on these third down and longs. This is Nathan Jenkins, the third who came in motion. Davison. Nowhere to go. He's going to be wrapped up again by that defensive line from Seminole. My goodness, that was Sacked Preston Watson in there, Ethan Pritchard, Dion Campbell. That Seminole defense line. is going to work tonight, Coach. Yep. Fourth down and, 19. and the punt unit <laughs> quickly comes out there for Apopka. Well, really, both defenses have been playing pretty well. Absolutely. So. And you said it. We said it again. No surprise the defenses are having their way tonight. High punt, and it is spiraling. And that one is caught by number six, Antonio Simpson. So Seminole's offense will come out here again and try and get something going. Coach, what does David Parks have to do to find some points on the board for Seminole? Well, I think, you know, they they need to come back and run a couple of those little screen passes, uh, you know, the quick screen, and just get him comfortable, get some completions under his belt because he doesn't look comfortable back there right now. And maybe even go into the run game and see if they can hit him a little bit on the run game. Uh, Might help your quarterback game. Absolutely. Uh, Wouldn't be surprised if they got the run game going as well. They've got a deep running back room. You, of course, should know how key running backs are. Yes, they do. And they've got some good running backs. Uh, They've got probably six running backs that could go and play anywhere. Parks finds Lawrence Lawrence. wide open. He had a step on his defender, and Darren Lawrence moves the chains quickly. It was a good thing he dove for that pass because he would have been gone for six had he stood up still. Nice little play action there. As if you're David Parks, that's got to get you a little more comfortable in the offense, having a simple route like that for your best receiver on the team. Parks again, he's taken down. You know, we apologize, folks. These numbers are way too dark. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to read these names. I believe that was number 28, Antoine Robinson on the sack. But yeah, that was Antoine Robinson. 
with the sack. That is his first sack of the season. Second down and long for Seminole. It will be a carry here. That is Avis Brown Jr. Nice effort. Fantastic effort. That line was getting ready to push. Third down and manageable coming up for the Knolls. Uh, what you want to see out of your running backs is you keep those legs turning. You know, the last thing you want to do is stop those those feet. You keep the feet moving and keep pushing. Avis Brown Jr., he's just a sophomore. There's one, two, three senior running backs, and the rest are sophomores or juniors. So this running back room for Seminole is going to be loaded once again next season. Third down and seven, 8.33 to go in quarter number two, Parks. Oh, Intercepted. A costly mistake for the Knowles. Wow. Yeah, I don't know if there was a little miscommunication there or what, but uh, yeah, he looked like he was he was throwing it to the uh, Popka defender. Yes, there was not a knoll inside of that football trying to find the number on there. I believe that was Malachi Davey on the interception. If it wasn't Malachi Davey, yeah. if it wasn't Malachi Davey and your parents are watching, sorry. Yeah. These numbers are very dark to yes. see. I'm sure they're even dark for you guys viewing on the uh, computer screen as well. Turn your brightness up at home. First down and 10 at the 45. As David Parks, we said he was he looked a little uncomfortable. He started to find his footing, but right there, a huge interception. Well, it doesn't really matter. The Seminole defense is going to take care of it there on first yeah. down. And there was no pressure Thank either. I mean, he had plenty down. of time to get rid of the he ball. I, guess, I don't know if he just underthrew it or they just miscommunicated the on what the route was supposed to be. It looked to me it might have been a wheel route because Lawrence was running that sideline where he started in slot, but and he, he just, just, he just underthrew threw it. it short. Because the receiver was definitely behind the defender there. As I do just want to give a quick update for our college football viewers. The top 25 for the college football playoffs just came out. Tennessee 1, Ohio State 2, Georgia 3, Clemson 4. As Davidson's still on his feet, really nowhere to go. Third down long coming up. Yeah, there's just one oh, after another. Seminal defenders face. there. Right they they are everywhere. One. Swarming to the football. Popka faces third and 11 at the Seminole 46-yard line. So I just can't imagine for Tyson Davison, you know, you had class today, the long day in school, and then you got to go play that Seminole defense. Just <laughs> not, not, not the best Tuesday. Yeah. Third down and 11 coming up for Apopka. Two receivers to the top of your screen, two at the bottom, one comes in motion. Davison rolls out to his left. He'll zip this one across. Incomplete. Incomplete pass. Apopka has four. That was Nathan Jenkins, the, the third, the intended receiver, fourth down now, and I believe that punt unit is going to come out there. The excellent field position. Apopka can't take advantage. Yeah, that seminal defense stepped up after the uh, turnover there. And coach, I, what, what's a message if you're well, you've had you've probably had situations like this. Your young quarterback that was a pick in a big time game, they yeah. might get down on themselves. What do you what do you tell your quarterback after a throw like that? Well, you know, you, you got to tell them to put it, you know, put it put it away. It's over with. You, you you can't change what happened. You know, you just have to move on from that, and uh, you just got to get them in there and get them settled down. Um, you know, it, it's hard for a young Pop kid to put that in the back down. of their mind, you know, and and and, and not think about it. Or they put it in the back of their mind and think about it, you know. So it's like put it, you got to put it out of your mind, you know. So, uh, but, uh, you know, it's a big game for the young man. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, Popka's got a really good defense. And uh, you just got to get him to make some play. I mean, he made the, made a nice, decent throw a good with throw, Lawrence yeah. there, yeah. And I, we assume it may have been just a miscommunication on that interception. You know, David Parks, he, he's battle-tested. Some of these games he's had to come in and yeah. play quarterback. He he knows what's at stake here as a first-down carry for Rory Thomas goes backwards. 
Yeah, he came in during that Delan game. The took oh, over as QB1 one against Delan. They beat Delan, Lake Brantley, and of course they beat Lake Mary last week. So he's had three really solid games. Yeah. Again, two of them against huge district opponents and one against Delan, which is a big game between the Knolls and the Bulldogs. Mm -hmm. But also this this gives Apopka's defense, you know, some uh, some positive uh, vibes, you know, getting the turnover and absolutely, and and Seminoles just really not moving the ball like they normally do, and a lot of that has to do with quarterback play right now. You have Luke Rucker who, this today I was thinking he's not really a game manager, but he's not really you know a hurry up QB. He's just a solid, balanced quarterback that can get the job done wherever you need him. He's Committed to FAU, he's out tonight, back spasms. Aggravated it during the Lake Brantley game, took a nasty sack, got up quickly, went to the sidelines, and that was the last we saw him, unfortunately. And Michael Key, oh, a rare drop for Michael Key, but even if he would have caught that, he would have walked right into a wall. There was two, <laughs> two defenders right there. There was a gray wall waiting for him. As the punt unit comes back out there, David Parks will... Get ready to punt his second time of the night. And not good for his confidence right now. No. Especially when you, oh, we're going to have a water break, but especially, we'll stay here, especially when you have great receivers like Michael Key and Darren Goldie Lawrence. Lawrence. Yep. You, you got to feel comfortable with them, but tonight, yeah, it just hasn't clicked. And, you know, Eric Lodge, he's great at making adjustments. They, you want to stay championship for a reason. They're always in contention because maybe they make the right adjustments throughout the game, but. Like we mentioned earlier, this is Seminoles' kryptonite, Yeah, Apopka. Yep. Weird to say that they have a kryptonite, but Apopka is their weak spot. Yep, yep. They've had, Apopka's had the better of Seminole. They've only played five times in their history, which for the last four years you'd think it's a rival game, which it's not. But we just want to give you some background. This matchup in the playoffs every year started back in 2017. Apopka won that one, 54-21. The region finals in 2019, Apopka won 20-0. 2020, the pandemic year where Seminole won the state championship. The Knowles won 28-24. Oh, and a terrible punt from Parks as it goes backwards. backwards. And it's still rolling. And did a Seminole player touch that? And Apopka's going to scoop it up and score. A disastrous mistake from the Knowles special team. Holy cow. Well, you can't score on offense, let's score on special teams, Oh, right? my goodness. <laughs> if you're playing football bingo at home and you had the first touchdown was going to come on special teams, well, God bless you, I guess. <laughs> Holy cow, coach. Well, if, if you're Seminole there, you got to get on that thing and, and stop the ball. It's moving backwards. Absolutely. You know, you can't, you can't ex ex expect the ball to go out of bounds. You never know what it's going to do. It, it can take some funny bounces, and I think that's what happened. I think the kid thought the ball was going to bounce out of bounds, and I, it didn't. And, uh, and it was an easy scoop and score. One of the weirdest scoop and scores you'll ever see as he did a great job. Broke the tackle yeah, right he, there. Absolutely. And, and he great, fought, fought his way into the end zone. Great awareness of watching the play happen to make sure someone did touch it as that was probably a what do you want to say a 15 yard punt coach yeah it was, and then it, it looked took like the, it came right off the side of his foot thing went high and that spin was coming backwards and took one of the most unluckiest bounces and fumbles you'll ever see is the PAT unit out there for Apopka. Seminole known for blocking field goals and PATs. Oh, boy, they almost got to that one, but this one is up and good. So at 5-14 to go in quarter number two, the Blue Darters strike first on special teams. We'll step aside and take a quick break right here on VSN Orlando. Sharing the road is everyone's responsibility. Commercial vehicles don't maneuver like passenger vehicles and can't stop quickly. Large trucks and buses have a nose zone. Blind spots in front, behind, and on both sides of the vehicle. Stay out of the nose zone and never tailgate. Always pass a commercial vehicle on the left for best visibility. And watch for wide turns. Give them extra space. Find out more ways to stay safe. Share the road, Florida, and arrive alive.
Seven nothing is our score in a oh so important district championship game right here on VSN Orlando. Alex Zimbernoni, Dave Delfiaco with you. I, I'm not even going to go to you, coach, and how do you react to that play? Because we've never, se- I know you've never seen a, a score like that on special teams. One of the weirdest ways to find the end zone for a popka. Well, we were playing a popka one year, and the ball hit the back of one of our kids' legs, and uh, he didn't get out of the way, and they scooped it up and scored. On okay, it. so you have seen something yeah. similar. <laughs> And this one will roll out of bounds and 35. Seminole will start out in great field position as kickoff goes out of bounds, which is a penalty. You want to give a quick shout out to our friends at Wingstop tonight for helping us out, always providing pregame meals before each game on VSN Orlando and North Orlando. And Seminole, just like that, they make a mistake, but now they get the ball in great field position, Coach. Another mistake, not a penalty for Apopka, but a could be a costly one now that Seminole has their backs up against the wall. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's uh, it's Parks that has the bad punt, and they score the touchdown, so now you got a, you got a second thing there to kind of get in his head a little bit. And that was Rory Thomas almost broke a tackle there. One yard. And that Apopka defense has been extremely calm tonight. Under pressure, they have been flawless so far. Yeah, Seminole's got to get something going here. Uh, Poor halftime. you got uh, four minutes and 51 seconds left. And uh, tough to go in 7-0 at halftime with the offensive power that they have. And here we go, Rory Thomas, a big run in. Rory Thomas crosses the 50, a huge first down in that run game, trying to get going for the Knolls. Uh, and, and, and there again, they got plenty of time that they can run the football and, and kind of get Park settled in there a little bit, you know, and get his confidence up. Also worth noting, Seminole will get the ball to start quarter number three. And even though it's 7-0, and Apaka's offense has really not done anything. So if you're Seminole's defense, you still got to feel pretty good about yourselves. Yep. First down and 10 ball the 46. At the bottom, one on one. I'm sure they're going to have a safety over top on this. And I believe we have a whistle from the stands in the student section. As that's going to be a first of the year. Our first student section warning. So we'll resume play here. First down and 10 from the 46-yard line. So first and 10 for you know, it's Tuesday night. You're at a football game. If you're a student, you're not used to it. You get rowdy for <laughs> yeah. You're hyped to go to a football game on a weekday. It's early day tomorrow. First down 10 from the 46, 350 to go in quarter number two. Parks, another carry for Rory Thomas. Nowhere to go. Had a... Hurdle his own tackle. Yeah. Tackle looks like he slipped on the play and then kind of got into his feet. That play was blown up immediately, and here comes Trey Clark in for Rory Thomas. As oh, oh boy, as Rory Thomas now in some pain on that Apopka logo. We will step aside for a quick break and get you a quick update right after this commercial break right here on VSN Orlando. Sharing the road is everyone's responsibility. Commercial vehicles don't maneuver like passenger vehicles and can't stop quickly. Large trucks and buses have a nose zone. Blind spots in front, behind, and on both sides of the vehicle. Stay out of the nose zone and never tailgate. Always pass a commercial vehicle on the left for best visibility. And watch for wide turns. Give them extra space. Find out more ways to stay safe. Share the road, Florida, and arrive alive. Number two, Rory Thomas. Rory Thomas being assisted off the field by trainers. Looks like he got rolled up, we thought, coached by 
one of his offensive linemen. Yeah. As it doesn't help when your whole offensive line is comfortably 250 and above. So that's going to be a hard fall yes. if you're the victim of that. <laughs> yeah, I think they got their legs tangled up a little bit. Second down and 10. This is Trey Clark. Oh, wow. Nowhere to go. That's the UCF commit. Caven Call with a huge tackle for a loss. Third down and 11 coming up for the Knowles. Well, if you're Gus Malzahn, you got to be smiling at that type oh, of play. Yeah. The explosiveness from Caven Call. That's his second huge tackle for a loss of the night. Both of these offensive lines are having trouble with the defensive line tonight. Both very good defensive lines, so. Third down and 11, Parks completes wow. it to Lawrence. He's going nice to be throw. short. Nice catch on the play. We'll move the ball to the but Darren Lawrence line. being pretty Brown much tackled before he even made that catch. Fourth down and three. Fourth down and three for the Knowles. 2.25 to go in quarter number two here in the first half. Looked like Parks wanted to get a hard count there, and Eric Lodge will cash in a timeout. Timeout, Seminole. And up to the top of the screen, they're giving Michael Key a lot of room, you know, to get that little underneath route. And he's been very quiet tonight. Yeah. If you, if you just drop on the screen. And on paper, you'd think Darren Lawrence is a leading receiver, but it's Michael Key. And he has played phenomenal this year. Just a junior, had six catches, 124 yards last week, and a touchdown against Slake Mary. A career night for him. He also had a massive first two games of the year, most notably against Osceola. So he has been a huge, huge key to that Seminoles offense. I think that's what they need to do. They need to, they need to come back to Michael Key and get him going here. I mean, at this point, he might just be out there as a decoy, it feels like. Yeah. Just to focus, turn the focus on some of these other wide receivers, but he's been awfully quiet time tonight. Time That's kudos to Apopka's defensive two backs, excuse me. Seconds in the first half. Seminole faces fourth down and three. Here we go, fourth time down and three, three, coach. 2-14 to go. a quick little go. hitter up here at the top. And yep. there's Michael Key. He makes the catch. And Michael Key gets tackled so inside the 30. You're right on top of it. Yeah, he's just giving him way too much room. You can run the slant to hitch, and they run the slant there and, and uh, yeah, take advantage. At least advantage five of yards of separation yeah. on that catch. As that is a huge pass for Parks to get completed, move the chains. You're now your two minutes. You got under two minutes to go, and it'll be another carry. Oh no, Parks will. Quickly throw this is RPO. Justin Rosado Touchdown. using the speed. Oh. He gets pushed out inside the 10 at the five yard line. Play down the side line for and David Parks now, coach, down. getting more and more comfortable well, under and these, center. And these are a little easier throws for him, too. Little possession routes that are, you know, that make him feel a little more comfortable and get him situated into this game. So a minute 43 to go. Looks like Rory Thomas is back out there at running back. First down and goal from the five. David Parks on the QB keeper. A hard hit. Tried to slide. Couldn't beat the defender there. So second down and goal from the four now. Second down and goal from the Apopka four. Apopka safety coming up there. He was looking to pin his ears back on the quarterback. <laughs> he got in on the old baseball slide. 1.15 to go in the first half. Parks across. He's got his man, Rosado, for the touchdown. The Knowles strike. Kind of cleared it out and ran him underneath on a little out route there. Wide open. Yep. <laughs> Not a soul in sight as I got to imagine they're more worried about Michael Key and Darren Lawrence who have found the end zone dozens of times this year. And it looks like the well, Seminole line up in that. Two. They usually line up in that monster formation where they stack everyone to the way past the left hash mark. And they're going to go for two here, Coach. Darren Lawrence, the Wildcat quarterback. He'll flip it over for Michael Key wide open. And the Knowles convert on the two-point conversion. 
They are so hard to stop on those plays, Coach. And uh, good job by Parks there, uh, managing that drive and getting them down the field and making some good throws. And we'll stay with the Yaz, 108 to go, yeah. So a much-needed score for the Knolls. And if you're Jeff Rolson, Coach, uh, do you even try and take a crack at it here on offense or you just get to the locker room? Well, it, it depends on your field position here, too, um, where you're located on the field. You know, obviously, if you get good field position, you got a minute and nine seconds left to go. Obviously, you want to you take a shot at it. But if you're, you know, you're backed up around your 20-yard line, might just want to run the ball on the clock <laughs> yeah. and come back out in the second half. But there again, Seminole gets the ball at the start of the second half. So it's kind of a hard decision here all around. And also when your quarterback has been struggling throwing the football this year, you can't go downfield in three or four plays if you really wanted to. Well, Popka yeah. does a good job special teams-wise, and um, they, uh, they could set up a nice little run back here. They've got three returners back there. Or no, now two. As Kale Tomlin will get ready to kick off here for the Knolls. 108 to go in half number one. I think he's going to try to keep the ball to that far, or the short hash over there to the end zone. Yeah, and he'll yeah. just boot this, and Apopka will get a chance to return. No. Oh. Got it in the end zone. Wow. The end wow. Zone. I mean, he caught it right at that maybe half yard line, but his momentum brought him back. Well, and I think too he's got. I think the breeze. I think the wind's blowing a little bit. His the wind's way helping too, Tomlin. Yeah. <laughs> so first down and ten at the twenty yard line. So you talked about good field position. Should Apopka get it on the return? They don't. So now you've got a decision here if you're Apopka. If you want to try and even get into field goal range, haven't really seen the kicking unit do much tonight they haven't really had the opportunity so interested to see if they get into field goal position what they'll do with it well, sometimes you try to get your little bag of tricks out here too as well but you got to be careful because you're on your own 20. they got them spread out so first down and 10 from the 20 and davison will keep it <laughs> nowhere to go that again preston watson having a game again he is on a hot streak, Coach. Well, you know, like I said, Seminole's not worried about the pass right now. They're begging for them to throw it. Yeah. <laughs> Second down and 10, 45 seconds to go. Now, Seminole does have two timeouts. If Apopka runs a play here in these next couple seconds, do you think Eric Lodge will call a timeout here and try and give his offense maybe just a handful of seconds left with the football? Or actually, this might be it. They, this might be the final play of the first half. Yeah. As there's yeah, 22 seconds, it'll be a run here. Davison will keep it. That Seminole defensive line quickly stops. And I'm looking over at the Seminole Second sidelines. Eric Three Lodge, dollars. not going to do much. No, they're going to go at halftime here. Yeah, I think they got both, some momentum, though, right there. Absolutely. The score and... and uh, you don't want to give David Parks yeah. momentum. Yeah. <laughs> and then you, you regroup right here and uh, with the with the momentum that you have. And, uh, come out and attack him in the second half. Absolutely. Well, it's no surprise that we've got ourselves a one-point game going yep. into the locker room. You, you predicted a low-scoring affair and a defensive battle. It is. And we'll see if Madison Little can get a quick interview with head coach Jeff Rolson. Well, while we uh, wait, coach, what have you seen so far from both these teams? I know it's been all defense, but yeah, yeah, it's been the specifics been, of it. You know, and then you got uh, Popka gets a touchdown on special teams, and uh, you know, there's there's always three phases of the game: there's offense, defense, special teams, and uh, Popka gets some points on special teams, and. Uh, here, I think Seminole started to get their offense going a little bit here right before the uh, end of the half and got in the end zone. Um, I think Apopka is going to need to start to establish some offense. Absolutely. Because, to, to, uh, you know, seeing what Seminole just did, you know, that, that can make it a little uh, unnerving. So, well, you know, as a coach, what do you what do you say at halftime for an offense that's struggling? You, Of course, you ran the football 
Yes. And when you're down <laughs> by a lot, the, the run game has to kind of get ready to exit. They're not down by a lot. But, no, no. But, but what's you're, the message? You're okay. In this yeah, you're situation. okay. But what's the message for the offense at well, halftime? And, and there again, they haven't been very successful with running the football. So, you know, they got to get they got to get a better push up front. They got to get on their blocks, and they got to start moving Seminoles' defensive line. If they don't do that, they're not going to be successful running the ball. And uh, I don't see them being as effective as they can to be in throwing the football. Just don't see it. And we're going to go down to Madison Little for a quick update on the sidelines as Apopka is still talking things over on the sidelines, watching some film coach. So take it away, Madison. A score of 8 to 7 going into the half. Seminole up by one. I tried to grab Coach Rolson from Apopka for a quick interview, but him and his defense are still having a lengthy conversation on the bench. So I'll get you guys back up after the break. Back to you guys in the booth. Thank you so much, Madison. We will take a quick break here, get you back out here in about 13, 14 minutes or so for the start of quarter number three in a huge district championship matchup between Apopka and Seminole. We will step aside right here on Varsity Sports Network Orlando. We're all trying to get somewhere. But no matter what, no matter where we're going, we never forget it. what matters most. Gentlemen, and welcome to halftime. On behalf of Principal Lyle Hines, Directors Jeremy Langford and Mark Ellis, and the entire Hopkins community, we bring you the 2022 Blue Daughter Marching Band. The Blue Daughter Band is under field direction of head drum major Ariana Young, assistant drum majors Sharon Henry. Corey Cotman and Ashley Murphy. Band colonels are Kinsey Walton, Lowry Richards, Caitlin Harrison, Tanner Reynolds, and Jordan Thompson. We are excited this week to showcase our halftime entertainment, not only to our two Blue Daughter football games, but also at our annual marching music performance assessment being held at Boone High School, Saturday, November 5th. Your Blue Daughter band is excited to present all they have been working on since the band camp of summer and we wish them the very best in this setting. Tonight, we are thrilled to present performance of Shades of Latin, our halftime show, featuring Sierra's sister, Santana's Novus, and Estancia, followed by our Apopka fight song. During our show, we will feature soloists, Jose Orozco, Isaac Lewis, Clayton Reynolds, and Jay Curry. Drum majors, is your band ready?
not just the ships, the armor, or the aircraft. It's something more. It's the will to fight. Determination to win, found inside each and every Marine, that answers a nation's call. Battles won. Sharing the road is everyone's responsibility. Riders, be seen. Wear reflective gear and use front and rear lights after dark. Drivers, when passing a bicyclist, give a minimum of three feet. Find out more ways to stay safe. Share the road, Florida, and arrive alive. In sports, we wear all types of equipment to protect ourselves from injury. One of the most important, yet neglected parts of the body are the ankles. Research shows that more than 30% of all sports injuries are ankle-related. Preventing an injury is key in any sport and applies to any job where you're on your feet all day as well. Prevent sprained socks were scientifically designed and engineered for support, stability, and performance. Stay active with PreventSprainSocks.com. Searching for meaning in a relentless world, always connected, but somehow alone, trapped by illusion. We offer another path where the battle to belong begins. Awakened by a calling, united by the cause you fight for, no one can take away what it means to be among the few, the proud, the marine. Sharing the road is everyone's responsibility. Commercial vehicles don't maneuver like passenger vehicles and can't stop quickly. Large trucks and buses have a nose zone. Blind spots in front, behind, and on both sides of the vehicle. Stay out of the nose zone and never tailgate. Always pass a commercial vehicle on the left for best visibility. And watch for wide turns. Give them extra space. Find out more ways to stay safe. Share the road, Florida, and arrive alive. Are you in the market for the finest athletic apparel available? Check out TheImperialPoint.com. Fully sublimated designs, top quality, made in the USA apparel for any team and any fan. Check them out today at TheImperialPoint.com or give them a call at 800-801-4884. Imperial Point Apparel, made in the USA. We're all trying to get somewhere, but no matter what, no matter where we're going, we never forget what matters most. For every generation, it has started with the call to serve. Discovering the purpose and the belonging earned with the title. Learning to dig deep and push through adversity together. Defending our nation and its people. It is a life of great worth and reward. But Marines are never really finished serving. Their commitment comes full circle, visible in communities across our country. This is Semper Fidelis. Always faithful. Always Marine. 
marking a path for the next generation. Guys, I talked about it a little bit earlier, but this is a big game for these two teams. Not only is this a new rivalry matchup that we've been seeing the last couple of years, but tonight's game actually has a lot at stake. The winner of this game will be first in the district, and the loser will be second in the district and will be in those seeds for the regional playoffs, which start next Friday. So a lot at stake for both of these teams tonight. Back to you guys in the booth. We're all trying to get somewhere, but no matter what, no matter where we're going, we never forget it. what matters most. And welcome back to Apopka High School. Here on VSN Orlando tonight's coverage is brought to you by Wingstop. Thank you to our friends over at Wingstop for, for providing VSN with pregame meals ahead of games. We've got a great one here. District championship on the line, and this game has lived up to all the expectations. If you were hoping for defense. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think these, these first couple drives are going to be real pivotal uh, on both, uh, both teams to uh, the outcome of this game. So... Yeah, it should be an exciting one. Alex and Bernoni, Dave Del Fiaco with you guys. Winner will lock up the one seed in four Metro. Second, the loser of this game will probably have that second spot. These are the two best teams in 4M, the Orlando region. And Michael Key will return things here for Seminole on the opening kickoff. Gets a good return, but a... Huge tackle. That was number one, Malachi Davey, from behind with the tackle at the 35-yard line. They have a good field position to start with. As coach, it was a defensive battle for both teams in that first half. What do you think the message was Eric Lodge gave to his quarterback, David Parks, who was shaky to start but got things put together in those final two minutes? Well, and, and I think that's a confidence builder, and, and that's what uh, Coach Lodge, I would imagine, you know, preached to him. 
uh, at a halftime that, you know, let's build off of that last drive and let's get this, let's keep this thing going. Absolutely. First down and 10, ball the 36. It's going to be a run for Rory Thomas. Oh, nice. Makes the first defender miss and gets back for maybe a gain of three, which looked like it was going to be blown up immediately. Yeah, nice job of breaking the tackle there and making something out of nothing. As Rory Thomas was hurt earlier, comes back in on that final drive and 100% now on offense for the Knolls. As after this game, uh, this will conclude Seminoles' regular season. And Rory Thomas here. Oh, oh, my goodness. If he didn't trip up on himself, he had a lot of room to run. Yep. He made a nice little move there, but his feet just slipped out from underneath of him. And the turf monster claiming a victim early here in quarter number three. Right after this game for Apopka, they will travel to Akaiba. So Apopka will play three games in a week. They got him off sides here. Encroachment on the defense. And another penalty, penalty Dead ball for Apopka. Sides against Apopka. With the penalty, the ball will move to the Apopka 49-yard line where it's first and 10 for Seminole. It's an automatic first down and 10 for Seminole. Inside their own 50 at the 49 now. 10.44 to go in quarter number three. And this is Avis Brown Jr. Just met immediately by a herd of blue darters. Yeah, trying to get that edge. You know, uh, Popka's got good speed on defense too, and it's going to be hard to get on the the outside of these guys. Second down and ten ball at the 48-yard line of a Popka. And just like that, three plays, three new running backs in for Seminole. This is Trey Clark in the backfield now. Haven't really seen Parks go to the air in the second half. And this time he will. It's going to be a screen. Lawrence, the catch, makes one person miss. He'll get the first down and more. Darren Lawrence oh, down Darren. to the 35. He did that all on his own right there. I'll tell you, there was, there was defenders right there to make the play, and just the athleticism of Lawrence was just uh, tremendous right there. Mike Norvell and Florida State have themselves a true athlete coming to Tallahassee next season. First down and 10 ball, the Apopka 35. Two minutes have gone by, and oh. the turf monster again. <laughs> this time, taking Avis Brown's run away from him. Now this is when you need to go to the equipment guy and get a, a get that change on the, <laughs> on the cleats there, you know. Hopefully you don't have molded cleats and you can take them out Absolutely. and change them up. We always made sure on our sidelines we kept different size cleats for that reason. Oh, yeah, nice little Nike inventory going for you guys. Second down and 12, Parks. Oh, a little miscommunication there. And Michael Key, the intended receiver. That's the second time uh, Parks has had some miscommunication where a pass goes nowhere near his wide receiver. 23 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Seminole currently leads 8-7. As third down and 12 now. This is where Apopka's defense has really taken things over. Both defenses have been phenomenal on third downs. Yep. Very good. And Parks Plenty of stays time. in the pocket. He's going to have to roll out, and he'll take off David Parks. Hard hit right in the shoulder pad. Fourth down and seven coming up. I think they're going to go for it here. Let's see if a Popka DB's giving that room to the one side. Yeah, you see up at the top there, he's got some room to work with. I got him to jump again. And I believe that's Call who jumped, Coach. Wow, that, that's, that's really... Uh, is painstaking for a coach. When that's, you do it twice in a row. Back to, I'm about to say back to back, and especially on a player like Kayvon Call, who is three star committed to UCF. And you're, you, you got a pivotal fourth down. Here, Absolutely. You know, so. And now the playbook gets pretty easy. Fourth and one. You've got all sorts of options now. Yeah. And you've got you've got a running back room that can handle this type of situation. Do you go with Lawrence and the Wildcat here? Yeah. You got Preston Watson lined up. Looks like he might 
lend a hand in the blocking package. And Lawrence will get the first down of more. Darren Lawrence all by himself. Touchdown, Seminole. A huge fourth down conversion for the Knowles. Yeah, that happens sometimes when you got everybody at the line of scrimmage. That guy breaks the tackle, and there he goes. It's just open field. And Darren Lawrence, calm, walking into the end zone. He pumped his brakes at the one and waited for someone to challenge him. <laughs> Trust me, as a head coach, you don't want to see that. It's a penalty sometimes, depending <laughs> yeah, could, on the ref. It could be. You're right. You know, just get, get in the end zone, score the touchdown, <laughs> and then come walk over to the sideline. You know, Darren Lawrence did get a unsportsmanlike conduct penalty last week in their win against Lake Mary, scored the touchdown, ran to the corner of the Seminole end zone, took off his helmet, and started giving everyone on that Seminole's sideline high fives to the fans. Yeah. So it could have been a costly unsportsmanlike again on him, but no penalty there, and the Knowles cushion their lead to eight now. With 8.17 to go, we will step aside for a quick break. Get you right back out here on VS Center Orlando. A district championship is on the line. Searching for meaning in a relentless world, always connected, but somehow alone, trapped by illusion. We offer another path where the battle to belong begins. Awakened by a calling. United by the cause you fight for. No one can take away you are in this room. what it means to be among the few, the proud, the Marines. Welcome back here to Apopka High School, presented by Wingstop. It's Seminole and Apopka. The PA announcer just announced a former Apopka player, Nakai Martinez, committed to UCF. Last year, he's on Gus Malzahn's squad, the number 25 in the playoff rankings. Apopka and Seminole, both tons of UCF talent, coach. Yes. You got the twins from Seminole last year. They're at UCF now. Well, look at this, coach. A huge kickoff return all the way across to the 42-yard line. That's number 15, I believe. You got that? Rashad Watson. Watson. Folks, just bear with us on these numbers. It may not even be a 15. But nonetheless, a huge kickoff return. Yes, yes. Good which job. they need to give, the special teams unit needs to give Apopka excellent field position. Yes, because the offense has not generated a whole lot. First down 10 at the Apopka 42-yard line, 8.05 to go. In quarter number one, excuse me, quarter number three. Davison will keep it himself and will get dragged for maybe a gain of three there. His coach, uh, tough yards there. I was going to say, and coach, probably the biggest thing Jeff Olson could have emphasized was not the defense, but the offense trying to just find something yeah. to get going. Yeah, it's that's tough, you know, and it's you're you're kind of one dimensional. And uh, you, you can't really incorporate anything else. And you're not getting good movement up front, which is a key to, to being a running football team. Second down and eight. And Davison again the carry. Find some more yardage, maybe a gain of three sec. Third down and five coming up for the Blue Darters. Yeah, and Seminoles really put in their ears back. These guys, the secondary guys, and the, the linebackers, are they're just coming. I saw that that Seven defensive back on the far side of the field the sprinting. Because now if you're a pocket, do you try and go to the air here? Third down and four. Two wide receivers to the top of your screen, one to the bottom. A receiver comes in motion for a popka. And nowhere to go again. That seminal defensive line holds strong. Yeah, there's just too much push right there. No gain on the play. 
Can't be effective running the ball when you don't have the push. And it looks like the punt unit will come out there and just try and flip the field, Coach. A special teams tonight for both teams. Maybe just the punting units have not been on par tonight. Yeah. Hawkins punters had a lot of high booming punts that not booming, but just have gone high in the air. And, of course, David Parks had that costly punt that resulted in a touchdown for Apopka. Well, they had one that looked like it was partially, uh, what was that, Seminole had that, that first punt. Block, yeah. And then they had the, the one that went off the side of his foot. And Apopka touches it right away. And yeah. just going to bled that one a little bit. I was going to say that ball might have rolled a couple more yards. So Seminole will start out at their own 23-yard line, and this will take us to a third-quarter water break. We will step aside for a quick break right here on VSN Orlando. Sharing the road is everyone's responsibility. Commercial vehicles don't maneuver like passenger vehicles and can't stop quickly. Large trucks and buses have a nose zone, blind spots in front, behind, and on both sides of the vehicle. Stay out of the nose zone and never tailgate. Always pass a commercial vehicle on the left for best visibility and watch for wide turns. Give them extra space. Find out more ways to stay safe. Share the road, Florida, and arrive alive. And welcome back here to VS San Orlando. Coverage of Seminole and Apopka brought to you by Wingstop. Seminole set up at their own 23-yard line, 5.47 to go in quarter number three. Alex Zimbernoni, Dave Del Fiaco with you for a huge district matchup. Winner gets the one seed. Loser likely gets that two seed in the 4M playoffs. I believe it's region two. Yes, region two, region two. That was the new playoff format for the state of Florida. Metro and Suburban, these two teams will be playing in Suburban. Gonna be a lot of co lot of tough competition yeah. on that Metro side. And a lot of it coming from this district. Absolutely, this is the death district, many have <laughs> called it. And Parks. Keeps it on the read option, and he gets smothered on that play. Third down and long. That Apopka defensive line has not flinched at all. Where it's going to be third down and a long 12 for Seminole. As I know the passing game has been shaky, but you try and take a shot here, Coach. They've been very quiet going long tonight. Well, I th still think they still throw some underneath stuff. And Parks will throw it deep, and... Maybe Eight miscommunication again. Darren down. Lawrence was maybe 10 yards behind the football. And the punt unit will come out for Seminole. for Seminole. This kind of makes you nervous now. The Seminole punt unit out there was a disaster last time. David Parks had maybe a 15-yard punt, took an unfortunate roll. And someone on Seminole touched it, and it was all over as Apopka scooped it up and ran, ran it back for six. Fourth down and 12 here, 4.42 to go in quarter number three. Apopka's coming after it. Parks a much better punt. And Apopka will return it. Great open field tackle. That's number 21, Juan Burchell. And Apopka maybe gets a yard on the return there. Good field position, though. Blue and Apopka's had great field position yeah. tonight all throughout the game, Coach, but just haven't been able to capitalize. They got to they gotta be able to, to, to throw something here, you know. <laughs> Imagine me saying that, you know. I know. I, <laughs> but, you know. The you, expert over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not getting the movement they need up front. And so, you know, and, and Seminole's just pinning their ears back. And, uh, I mean, a screen game, something to, to you know, offset their, uh, get them on their heels a little yeah. bit. <clears throat> well, for, we can ask. Is it hard to make that adjustment when you're, you know, run the triple option to go to 
really commit to a pass game when you're down in a game like this? Yeah, well, yeah, it is. And, I mean, we would still be running the ball too. But, um, you know, it's like I said, it, uh, they got a little – Little run game going there. Tyson Davison, a huge carry. Back to your saying, Coach. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, it is. It is harder, but you know, we, we practice it. We practice, so you got to be ready to do it. As we actually have a different quarterback in there, Coach. That was Caleb Hicks on the carry, the big senior, averaging six yards a carry. So, trying something new here. Yep. Maybe change it up a little bit. As they still ran it, but Hicks was. Going all the way downhill. Second down and two, one of their better first down plays. And looks like they're going to have another design QB run here as they stack the box. Getting a little more of their, uh, their old style. I was about to say, this yeah. looks like a Popka maybe of last year. Yeah. <laughs> and again, Hicks moves the chains for the first down. Comes into this game with just 114 rushing yards, six yards per carry. Three rushing touchdowns. Jeff Rolson trying something new at quarterback. Well, and, they, and they, they put in a little extra beef, and they're getting a little more movement there. They got Caven Call in there now. Yeah. Leading the charge with some blocks. You got to pull out all stops here. Yeah, they're definitely getting into some of their old offensive <laughs> stuff here. As another carry here. And they move the chains, not the chains, but they move a little bit more, four yards. As now coming back in the game is Tyson Davison. So we might be seeing some quick substitutions at quarterback. And it looks like, yeah, I'm looking at the Apopka sidelines. It looks like their offense coordinator is talking to Hicks, getting ready to give him the next play. So they just might be rotating quarterbacks out the rest of the way coach I, I don't know 233 to go in quarter number three well I would keep doing what you're doing because it was successful <laughs> there you know in those last few plays they're kind of getting into their little single wing look David and a flag that's going to be a delay a game and it took too long, long to get that play going and just as we thought the run game was starting to click a costly and easily avoidable delay game penalty happens. Yeah, and that, that, that could be a drive killer there too. Now it puts you in a second and long instead of second and short, you know. <clears throat> second down and 11. Davison still in there at quarterback. Another man comes in motion. Davison the carry. Watson again the tackle. He'll drag him forward to maybe the 40. Back to the Popper line of scrimmage. The, the, the Preston Watson, another six. tackle. He's had a Third phenomenal game Seminole for that Seminole line. defensive line. Is a third down and seven for the Blue Darters as Caleb Hicks comes back in the game. As Zeldrick Roberts, the running back, comes out. And all sorts of shifting. And yeah, I keep running what you're running with Hicks here. He's just a big, powerful quarterback. And no, it's going to be a little bit of a trick. And oh, it's a huge hole. It's going to be a foot race. Touchdown, Apopka. That's Rashad Watson. The middle linebacker who's taken a couple carries this year. And Jeff Rolson goes into his bag of tricks and finds a touchdown. Yeah, that's their little influence play with the, uh, with the spinner. And then coming back the other way. Caught Seminole off guard. And it looked like Seminole might have had them for a moment. Yeah. But the linebacker, Rashad Watson, turns on the Jets. Watson's the leading tackler on defense. Coming into the Evans game last week, had 76 tackles, four tackles for a loss, a sack, two interceptions, a couple fumble recoveries, and now can put a rushing touchdown on that stat sheet. Going for two here. And Hicks got the two, and we've got ourselves a tied game. 
123 to go in quarter number three. Well, the Popka came out and answered on this drive. That's for sure. They made some adjustments, got back to their single wing look, put some uh, he uh, some heavy guys in there, bigger quarterback, and and ran the ball right down uh, Seminole's throat. A must score drive, and like you said, they caught him with that little counter. Absolutely influence counter there. As we've also got the Popka radio network just a couple seats down and. They are going crazy. Uh, they, 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 they're waiting. <laughs> they are waiting for this one. So now we get to see how Seminole responds. Yes. As the passing game still trying to find some consistency. There have been a couple of notable plays that have worked for Seminole, but overall it's been quite shaky tonight. Well, you know, um, Apopka found a way to run the ball. You know, and that, that Caleb that, Hicks. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I talked about them maybe trying to throw it a little bit or mix mix it up, but they just they just moved everything in tight and got after it on that drive. A huge eight points for Apopka's offense as the two point conversion was the probably the most important thing on that drive they needed to keep up with Seminole. So we've got a 15-15 ball game with a minute and change to go here in quarter number three, setting up for what's gonna be an exciting fourth quarter. As, oh my goodness, coach, this kick goes out of bounds again. Kickoff goes out of bounds. So Seminole will start first and 10 on its own 35. That's the second line. time Apopka has had a kickoff where it finds its way out of bounds before it meets the end zone. So excellent field position for the Knowles coming on offense. Yeah. Now, what do we expect, Coach? What, what, what are you trying to look for now for Seminoles' offense? Do they try and maybe go back to the run game, or do they try and establish a passing game that they've been trying to establish all night? Well, I, I think they got to have a little mix of both. I don't think they can just, you know, revert to just throwing the ball right now because you got a quarterback that hasn't quite been in sync. At times he looks good, and at times he doesn't. So I think you got to run, mix it up a little bit, a little RPO there. That could be a fumble. And they called it incomplete. Marvin Brown, the drop. We've seen them go with those types of plays, those little sidearm throws from Parks in the flat to a receiver. Hey, he looks like a shortstop making that, uh, <laughs> that throw over to first base. Yeah, those Matt Stafford throws, how he used yeah. to throw them with the sidearm. So second down and 10. Patrick Mahomes. Or now Pat Mahomes. A wide receiver to the top of your screen, two to the bottom. And Thomas, the carry. Not much there. These defensive lines tonight have put on a great performance. Gain of two, third and eight. Third down and eight, 102 and counting to go in quarter number three. As this is just a typical Seminole Apopka showdown, <laughs> Coach. Yeah, it's what they call a slobber knocker. <laughs> One at each other. And Parks incomplete and a pass interference flag is gonna come out. Lawrence was draped by that defensive back. I believe that's Jordan Wright who's gonna get called for the penalty. Yeah, I think he was there a little too soon. And this pass interference rule in high school football, not the automatic first down. No. 15 yard penalty. Oh no, wait, what am I thinking of then? I'm thinking of a different penalty then. Because we had a situation on that against oh, Coco. I mean, if, it's, if it's third and 20, it's not going to be that's what, first down. Yeah, I didn't, you know, you know uh, I didn't do my math. <laughs> <laughs> first down in 10, a fresh set of downs for a seminal offense that is trying to find the end zone again. A little hole to run through there. A great carry. That's Avis Brown who gets down to the Apopka 37. Another running back that has carried the football tonight for Eric Lodge. This might be our last play here. First down and 10 ball at the 37 yard line. Ball comes free and Parks has to get on top of it. The exchange between Parks and Brown Jr. just 
not pretty there. And that's going to be the end of quarter number three of that play. This game's gone by quick. It's the quickest is? seminal game we've ever yeah, done. 8.44, yeah, usually. Well, it's no surprise that we're in a tight one with Seminole. But like you said, this has been a quick one. As we've got a huge fourth quarter on the way, we will step aside and get you back out here for quarter number four right here on VSN Orlando. We're all trying to get somewhere. But no matter what, no matter where we're going, we never forget it. What matters most. Welcome back here to Apopka High School. Seminole Apopka brought to you by Wingstop right here on VSN Orlando. And no surprise, we are in an instant classic where yes. we are watching the makings of one. Yes, 15 apiece. So. Alex and Bernoni, Dave Del Fiaco with the winner. Claims district and gets that one spot in the playoffs. 4M District 2, Region 2. A very important game. Both these teams have unofficially locked playoff spots. Yes. You, you don't have to. You don't have to overthink that, but now it's just figuring out. All right, your, your pride and district championship. Yes, you know, that, right now, this is so. a game for pride. Third down and 10 for Seminole. Wide receivers are stacked to the left side. Parks now has to roll out. He's got plenty of running room. He's going to take off and show why Eric Lodge says he's a difference maker when Luke Rucker doesn't usually run, and we're going to have a penalty after the play. On the play. As Eric Lodge was giving David Park some high praise last week against Lake Mary using his legs. He's a difference maker in that aspect of the game. And we'll see what the flag is here, Coach. Did you see what happened? No, nah, I caught the tail end of it. I just saw the Seminole kid uh, fly down or on the ground. Dead ball. I guess wow. He a dead ball on so he's, Seminole. He's still got a first down here. So yeah, they got the first down, but now you just got to back them up some more yards. Yeah, and there again, this this is uh, this frustrates you as a coach, you know, that you hate to see you get a nice play and then uh, you get an unsportsmanlike conduct. You know, I didn't know you as a coach, huh? I didn't know you as a coach, but when in those situations, what was your reaction? Were you a yeller, or were you just you know turn your back and no and just no stare down at the ground? Or? There, no, there was a, uh, we we had. A <laughs> Confrontation. Okay. You know, and and uh, I was the one confronting. And that's sometimes the only way to get through when you make a costly mistake like that. And this is Trey Clark, the fourth ball carrier. Trey Clark is still going all the way down to the 16 yard line. What a, a nice run there. Huge just, run. Just determination, you know? Keeping those legs going. Where Seminole will have it first and 10. As you might as well just forget about that personal foul penalty. Yeah. They grabbed all those yards back and then some. First yeah. down and 10 at but the... But it could have been a touchdown. At, it could have. If you don't have the penalty, you know. Another carry for Clark. Again, just making the last effort to keep those legs turning. He'll get maybe a gain of four, but a solid run from him. 10.46 to go in the game. Yeah, he, he pushed those tacklers another two yards there. As Trey Clark, a junior, he'll be back next year for Eric Lodge. Runs the ball hard. Absolutely, just runs straight forward. Yep. <laughs> Keeps those legs churning. He would make a good option fullback. Oh. <laughs> and Clark again. He's going to go in. And did Clark get in? I believe so. He does. Touchdown, Seminole. Trey Clark, a Herculean effort to start the fourth quarter, Coach. Seminole takes the lead in the opening two minutes of quarter number four. Well, we got a ball game. 
the he typical typical Seminole Apopka showdown. And now, looks like Seminole still wants to go for two here. You have a popular challenge should they score. Looks like Lawrence will line up again at Wildcat. And Lawrence is going to try and use that speed I mean, and cutting ability, and he gets in. in. That's too easy for him when you have him lined up at Wildcat. Uh, then you got it. You got a guy that got blocked to the back of the end zone. That's that's pretty impressive right there. <laughs> and Seminole strikes in the first two minutes of quarter number four. Ten, ten to go in quarter number four. And Apopka, they've got a lot to answer. Right after this quick break, we will step aside right here on VSN Orlando. Searching for meaning in a relentless world, always connected, but somehow alone, trapped by illusion. We offer another path where the battle to belong begins. Awakened by a calling, united by the cause you fight for. No one can take away what it means to be among the few, the proud, the marine. And welcome back here to VS Orlando. Seminole Apopka winner is crowned district champion. And Tomlin's kick will be returnable for a Popka. And that special teams unit for Seminole wow. wraps up the returner that was, easily. That was some good coverage right there. They got down there in a hurry. To its own 16 yard line, where it'll be Blue Darter first down. As, as first much as the 10, offense and defense get talked about for the Seminole, 16. their special teams is one of the best there in the state. We got a flag on the play. Oh, we'll see what it is here. As that return only got out to about maybe the 15 yard line. Let's see what the official call is. Block the block wow, so Apopka's going to have a lot of field to make something happen if they want to find the end zone. As the Apopka faithful booing at these refs, I didn't really see anything, but regardless, Apopka's got some work to do on this drive. Yeah. The penalty will be a half the distance to the goal line where it'll be a pop the ball first and 10 from just inside its nine yard line. And we talked about it during the break about how strong that last possession was and they might have found something with Caleb Hicks. Do you just keep going back to him? It looks like Jeff Wilson's also having a word with, with a lines judge. Oh, most definitely. I mean, you got you to gotta keep doing what's, what's working for you. They got plenty of time on the clock. And there again, you don't want to give Seminole any time either. Yeah, Hicks is out there again at quarterback. Formation's a little different now where they had everyone stacked up. And spreading them out a little bit. So we'll see if he can even throw Caleb Hicks. He's been quiet in the passing game this year. Caleb Hicks on a first down run. We'll get the first down and more. He is a big kid to bring down. And Apopka moves right back. For a first down, they first quickly ignored that penalty on the kickoff. Hicks alone in the backfield. I think it's going to be all Hicks here. And, oh, my goodness. Makes a stiff arm and gets another first down. I don't know if you guys remember, Coach. You might remember. Remember Blake Bell from Oklahoma maybe 10 years ago? They called him the Bell Dozer. Mm -hmm. About 6'5", 240 or something. Kind of, not, clearly not the size, but reminds me a lot of him where Hicks is just having his way with the defense and finding ways to create offense as he's actually coming out for this play. Uh, they got to give him a little break. I mean, he's... A big two first, yeah. two first down runs. You're going to have a sweep of water. As Davison again in there at quarterback, he'll hand it to Roberts. And the turf monster almost claimed another victim. Ready Roberts is able to pick, pick his feet up and keep going. Maybe a gain of three, maybe four, four. there. Yeah. Three and a half. Three and a half. Uh, I'll agree with <laughs> you on that. Second down and six. As we've got, that's Noah Morgan, who I believe was actually the ball carry. He's hobbling to the sidelines. 
Because at this point in the game, you really can't afford to lose any players. No. Especially when you need all hands on deck. Second down and seven, 840 to go in quarter number four. Jenkins comes in motion. And Davison again will keep it. Davison the first down of more. Tyson Davison lowers the shoulder and gets into a popka territory down to the 38 yard line. Well, the, the line of scrimmage is changing a little bit. Really, both teams, you know, they're both Absolutely. running the ball well. As now Hicks back in there at quarterback. Maybe these defenses are getting worn out a little bit. Hicks again. Keeps moving those legs. Breaks Looks the like tackle. the play was blown up and maybe gets a gain of three. Who has the ball last? Maybe the uh, winner seven. of this game is who has it last. Oh my God! I'm, what are you I'm like? What are you talking about? Oh man, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I hate that we have under eight minutes to go, but I think it's still too early to decide that, Coach, because you don't know what Seminoles' offense may do. They might explode for one big play, which we've seen a couple times yeah. this year. True. But buckle up, folks. We've got a great one here. Seven and a half minutes to go. Davison makes a couple people miss. Keeps his legs going. Tyson Davison again, a huge run. Third down and one coming up for Apopka. And a helmet Apopka. comes off for an Apopka player. He has to sit out for a play. And here comes the big boys, coach. Yep. Yep. Third down and one. Send in the fullbacks and tight ends. And I think we got a defensive lineman in there, too. As we've seen Cave and Call come in a couple times to help out. Under seven minutes to go in this game. 6.51 and counting to be exact. As they've got to go, this delay of game penalty might be coming up soon. No, they will get it off. And they get the first. Boy, that's going to be close, close, Coach. Yeah. And Jordan Lions Perkins says they firing. stopped him. It will be close to a first down. Boy, oh, boy, they might have to bring out the sticks for this one, Coach. If anything, it's going to be fourth and an inch. And yeah, they're going to, they want an official measurement. Hard to tell by the naked eye. This is a huge measurement coming out. I think he might be a tad short. Is it here they come? We'll see. There again, you know, my eyes are not very good, so. <laughs> we'll see how good your eyes are here with this call. It's going to be awfully close. No. Short. Oh, my. Yeah. And Seminole will get the stop, so it's going to be fourth and maybe, what, half a yard, Coach? Yeah. about two feet short of a first down. So we'll come out of this timeout with 628 left. Fourth down and less than a yard. So fourth Ball down and half a yard for Apopka. Interested to see who's out there taking the snap. And no, Caleb Hicks is coming to the sidelines. Here we go, fourth and half a yard. And Apopka is going to get it and then some. They'll give, the play, they'll give him the forward the progress, the and Apopka line. moves the chains. When it is marked into play, it will be first. Solid play there from the Blue Garters coach. And now we've got another whistle for a water break. <laughs> so, well, that's probably a good time for our viewers at home to take a break. Uh, you know, pop a Tylenol in if you got a headache from this one or just get a drink of water or something. We'll take a break as well. 6.18 to go in this one. We've got a great one right here on VSN Orlando.
First down and 10, ball at the 26-yard line. Apopka Seminole right here on VSN Orlando. That's Caleb Hicks, the quarterback. He's been a hard man to stop. Caleb Hicks, another huge run. He'll move the chains again. Very patient there. I mean, just kind of reading through his blocker in the front of him and just waiting for that little, little hole, and he sprints right through it. I've just got to wonder, where was he in the first half? <laughs> He's been perfect in this second half. First down and 10 ball at the 14 yard line. Five thirty-three and counting to go. Hicks again, the QB keeper. Again, you, you said it, he's so patient. Looked like he was gonna get stopped immediately. Gets maybe a gain of four on that one, Coach. Uh, he stuck his foot in the ground. He looked like he was heading to the outside. He stuck his foot in the ground and, and jumped back inside. Just, just a nice run. Well, of course, you're the expert of having quarterbacks that run. Yeah. What, what's the how, – how critical is it to have someone who can run like Hicks to make oh, the offense successful? Well, when you're running offense, yeah. I mean, because yeah. that gives you uh, another threat uh, with the football. So, um, and really, it's, it's been their quarterback run game that's been their threat. Absolutely. Second down and six. Hicks again breaks some more and a huge – Spinning run from Caleb Hicks. Great effort. It's going to set right up there. a third down and short. Caleb Hicks. And I think you're seeing Seminole getting tired here. You know, they're getting wore out a little bit up front. Third down, one yard to go. As, as we praise the Seminole defensive line all evening, and you're right, they're starting to get worn down. Maybe they didn't practice for Caleb Hicks. He's a much different size than Tyson Davison. Third down and Short here, Apopka trying to push the pile. They'll get the first down. The running play moves the ball to the two So you're going to have four line. cracks at it from As your own two-yard line. Yep. It'll be first and goal, blue starters. You just don't want to make a mistake in this no. situation. You know, you just keep doing what you're doing. No stupid penalties. 4.02 to go in the game. Oh, we, oh my goodness, the ball comes free. Who's got it? Did Apopka get back on top of it? I think they got it. And they did. Oh, my goodness. That was Caleb Hicks who had been. I think so I almost threw the jinx in there. Oh, my goodness, Coach. Come on. <laughs> this game has been too good just to end on a muffed snap. We approach three minutes. You know, this, this is what seconds. I was talking about. This is your worst fear when you're down here. And, you, know, you, you just want to get that thing in the end zone. Second down and goal, 325 and counting to go. Hicks lost the football there. This is Roberts. Touchdown. Is he in? Touchdown, Apopka. Zeldrick Roberts. A huge two-point conversion now awaits. Yes, this is key. Everyone's celebrating, but... The bigger play is coming up now for Apopka with 3.11 to go in the game. Whistles on the field. I believe Eric Lodge called a timeout for Seminole. And it's going to be a timeout for Seminole. So we will step aside for a quick break right here on VSN Orlando. A huge two-point conversion awaits. Stay tuned right here on Varsity Sports Network. Sharing the road is everyone's responsibility. Commercial vehicles don't maneuver like passenger vehicles and can't stop quickly. Large trucks and buses have a nose zone. Blind spots in front, behind, and on both sides of the vehicle. Stay out of the nose zone and never tailgate. Always pass the commercial vehicle on the left for best visibility. And watch for wide turns. Give them extra space. Find out more ways to stay safe. Share the road, Florida, and arrive alive. Twenty three twenty one Seminole and Apopka always a fantastic matchup. A huge two point conversion for Apopka. You you said it was a good timeout by Coach Lodge. Yeah, yeah. He needed to take a timeout there and settle his guys down and, and let them get a little drink of water and catch your breath, you know, and, and get them ready for this two point conversion because this is key right here. 
Alex and Bernoni, Dave Del Fiaco with you for a Tuesday night clash between two of Orlando's best. And Hicks tries to keep those legs going, and no good. He stopped just short. Apopka can't tie this up in seminal. He had a pass they, option on that. I, what, what did I say? I thought during the break I told yeah, Coach, said I said, look for maybe they line up in Wildcat and someone tries to go in the back of the end zone for a catch. I actually had two guys, and I think they were both covered. The guy in the back of the end zone may have been open. It, it was going to be a risky throw yeah. nonetheless. As there's now 3.11 to go, 23-21. Just a quick side note. Before anyone was getting here, I got here around 5, 5.15. Apopka's kicker for about 20 minutes was practicing his onside kicks. Just trying to get the precise bounce. Yeah. So we'll see if they even try and kick it onside. He was kicking onside for maybe 20 minutes, just trying to nail the onside kick. I guess style, right? It's so hard to get that bounce. Yeah, I mean, you got 311, and you got, well, you do have all three timeouts, but, you know, there again, it, they didn't stop Seminole on the, the last possession. No. So, you know. At this point, the thing that has killed drives has been penalties. So Apopka's going to need Seminole to make a mistake on their own. Well, and Seminole's got their hands team out there, so they got the good hands company up there front. And these, this is one of the best wide receiver groups. <laughs> In Orlando, so they don't make mistakes too often. But when those balls make those strange bounces, they're not, it's not <laughs> coming in as a spiral, you know. It's, it, it can make it tough. Well, and they now like to kick it deep. They've had some issues kicking deep tonight. Oh, oh my that goodness. Went out of bounds again. No, no, no. It, I think it just stayed inside. The si yeah, so, oh. Oh. it does not get any closer than that. Wow. As that ball just rides the sidelines out of bounds. Well, here, you know, you're seminal and, and you need to run the ball to run the clock, but but you also are facing a team with three timeouts. So And an extremely good defensive line. Yep. But, you know, Seminole came out that last drive and they really ran the ball well. Extremely well. The run game really came together there. But I think you're going to see uh, Popka really pressing the line of scrimmage here. They, they, they got nothing to lose at this point. As Trey Clark was in there initially, came out now. It's Rory Thomas in there at running back. First down and 10, 3-11 to go. It's going to be a carry for Rory Thomas. And as expected, the Apopka defensive line uh, holds up. And just like that, Jeff Rolson will use his first timeout. Timeout on the field called by Apopka. As we don't really want to have to keep going to breaks for every commercial, so we're going to stay with you guys. Should Apopka get this ball back? In the perfect world for Apopka to get the ball back. Do they try and go to the passing game? Because that drive took about seven minutes and they ran the whole time. Or do they just try and get very aggressive if they get the ball back on the ground? Well, depending on how much time's left and what, what the field position's like, you know, depends on what they're going to have to do, you know. I know I'm skipping way ahead. <laughs> but I always run those scenarios in my mind because if you're seminal, the goal here is just to get that first down and start warming up the bus and start celebrating. But there's so many scenarios that are probably going through these coaches' minds, these players' minds. Well, and a field goal wins the game. A field goal does win the game if you're Popka. Haven't seen the field goal unit come out here at all tonight for either team. Second down and nine. Parks is going to step back. He'll air this one out. Incomplete. The clock stops. Parks tried to connect with his four-star wide receiver, Darren Lawrence, and Jeff Rolson doesn't have to use a timeout there. Any ideas on that play call, Coach? Would you – is it – I like the aggressiveness. Yeah, I mean, that's Seminole being Seminole, you know. It's uh, – they're not afraid to do that. You no. know, if they're gonna, you're going to press them at the line of scrimmage, they're going to – They're going to make you pay. Yeah. He's got he's to give his guy a chance to get the ball, you know, because let your athlete make the play. Absolutely. Third down and nine. Clock is stopped, 2.55 to go. And it looks like Eric Lodge is going to use another timeout. 
and talk things over with his offense. So this time we will step away. 2.55 to go. We've got ourselves a classic between Seminole and Popka right here on VSN Orlando. Sharing the road is everyone's responsibility. Commercial vehicles don't maneuver like passenger vehicles and can't stop quickly. Large trucks and buses have a nose zone. Blind spots in front, behind, and on both sides of the vehicle. Stay out of the nose zone and never tailgate. Always pass a commercial vehicle on the left for best visibility. And watch for wide turns. Give them extra space. Find out more ways to stay safe. Share the road, Florida, and arrive alive. Third down and nine, 23-21, the Knolls up. They're on offense, a huge play here. Parks, he's sacked. Wow. A huge defensive play. I believe that's number four, Lorenzo Payne on the sack. Fourth down and 15. As we'll stay with you, that was Lorenzo Payne. His second sack of the year, 246 to go. What a huge play there for the Popka defense coach. Yep, and now you got him pinned back. Now you can go after this punt. You just got to be careful you don't run into the kicker. Or... Uh, well, you bet you t I was about to ask you, do you send the house for this punt? Yeah, well, yeah, I, I think you try and block this. You've got, you've got David Parks in there punting. Who is, or at least get some get some pressure yeah, to the punter. Yeah, get him nervous. Yes, and, and you know, he kicks one off the side of his foot and gives you great field position. But you're still going to have pretty good field position. You've got plenty of 246. And you got a timeout in your pocket. David Parks, he's had some great punts tonight. He's had some rough punts tonight. Fourth down and 15. Parks gets it off, and it's going to bounce right at the 50, at the 48-yard line, and a great open field tackle by Seminole. David Parks does his job, and Apopka will have 52 yards to find the end zone with 2.37 to go. And that Seminole defense didn't get a lot of rest there. Three and out. This... You got plenty of time to stick with what you've been doing. Absolutely. You know? Well, just from up here in the press box, this has been a phenomenal game. Whatever happens, we expected it to be a classic. It was a classic, and 2.37 to go. It's such a fun matchup between these two teams. Yeah, great game. First down and 10. This is Tyson Davison at quarterback. He'll keep it. Davison has Hold plenty him. of room to run. Tyson Davison all the way down to the 35 and wrapped up. They're looking for the late hit out of bounds. You saw a holding. No flag there. Apopka moves the chains right away. That's, oh, my goodness. A huge play from the freshman quarterback. 2.18 to go. The clock is stopped. Ball at the 35-yard line. I don't think that was going to be a pass play. I think it was run all the way. Plenty of room on that left side of the field. As this is Roberts, the carry, maybe a gain of one there. Zeldrick Roberts stopped. He had the touchdown run on their last drive. 2.08 and counting to go now. That clock is ticking. We don't know Apopka's field goal range. Their kicker is warming up down here. They got to get a little closer in this to give him a decent shot. Second down. It's going to be another reverse sweep here. He's got a hole. Oh, he's tripped up. What could have been the game winning touchdown? A huge play there for Apopka as they move the sticks once more. Long 
One thirty to go in counting. Davis, excuse me, that's Hicks the carry. He'll get a gain of maybe three. The running play moves the ball to the 21 Apopka. yard line. One timeout left, down. 112 and counting to go. That's, oh, my goodness, coach. Well, you got to keep that timeout for your field goal. And Eric Lodge has a timeout as well, probably to yeah, ice the kicker should they. We're running a lot of clock here. Yeah, this clock is working all the way down. At least 20 seconds have gone off. And that delay of game penalty is always in the back of your head now. And another carry here in that seminal defensive line. Again, the big stop. The ball carrier is down at the 22. 33 seconds to go. And that clock coach is ticking all the way down. Under 30 seconds to go, 25 seconds and counting. He's got plenty of time. And a timeout from Coach. Oh, he ices the offense. <laughs> Coach Lodge ices Apopka's offense. A huge third down, Coach. 14 seconds left, excuse me. Well, I, I think he wants to make sure that they're they're prepared for absolutely yeah. here, you know. With the ball at the Seminole 23 yard line. So right now, this kick would be from about 40 yards. Third down in 10, 14 seconds. Are you now just trying to line this one up for your kicker? Are you trying to get some yards or who knows, even find the end zone? Maybe a little run pass option here. Okay. Because it's not going to hurt you to throw the ball. No. And it's third and long. And you give your kicker a little more room if you, you do complete it. Just make sure you throw it away if it's not open. Here we go, folks. 14 seconds left. A pop the ball. I think they're just going to go ahead and try and run this. I don't know. This is Trey Moldrow. They got a big receiver out here. And fourth down coming up. And 10 seconds to go. Play takes the ball down the quarter. Number four, and they're going to let that clock run down. And Rolson will call a timeout. And now the, they didn't. The field by Apopka. They didn't. St yeah, everyone knows that clock hit has hit zero, but yeah. the timeout was called well before. They'll have to. Remaining. They'll put three seconds on there this will clock. Three seconds to play. As Apopka As, oh my a goodness, coach. Down. What an exciting game. Line. Whatever happens here, it has been tons of fun. Who had that last run? <laughs> I don't know. Anybody see that last run? Yeah, we're everyone. We got reporters up here trying to figure out who had that run. <laughs> it's been pretty hard. Hayden Kosicki up to kick. Well, you know, he's in the middle of the field, so that's that helps. With this is from left, 35 yards. I'm going to get right in front of you, Coach, <laughs> right below you. Here we go. 35 yards. Neither team has a timeout. This is for the win and the district. Kosicki's kick is up. Good. And good. Apopka wins the game and the district. 24 23. Wow. Holy wow. cow, coach. What a game. What, what a an, game. Another instant classic. Wow. The last three meetings, 2020, 2021, and now today, have all been decided by five points. The last two, Apopka has won by a point. And I don't think there was no doubt on that kick. He, he looked like it was right down the middle. Hayden Kosicki. Capturing the district title. Your Apopka Blue Dorner. Number 57, Hayden Kosicki. Let that one sink in. Holy cow. 
probably had the weight of the world on him for those 10 seconds. It was a high snap too, Coach. I bet you he'll be at school early tomorrow. Oh, he's the hero. Absolutely. Yeah, what a great game, though. I mean, both teams really played hard. It was a hard football game, and it came down to the end. And, you know, don't be surprised, anyone, if these two teams are playing for in the region finals. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not going to be surprised. If you told me they were, I'd, I'd give you I'd give you a blank expression and <laughs> said, uh, I told you so. What a, what a phenomenal game, Coach. Coach Coggle here from Apopka <laughs> come up to me. We, we've been longtime friends, played against each other in high school, and he's like, what about that? <laughs> he's just excited. Hey, you know, good, good for Apopka. It was a great win. And, uh, as many were saying, they, this was going to be a down season for Apopka. Not sure what some meant by a down season. They're 7-2. and two. They win district. Well, you know, they got a good coaching staff. And Absolutely. they got a good tradition here, and they just, you know, they, they, they build these kids up, and they, and I think they were progress and work this year with their offense, and, again, and uh, they kind of finished out the season on a really good note, and uh, the regular season, obviously, they're going to be in the playoffs, but, uh, you know, they do have to play this Friday, and, uh, Wakaiba? Yeah. No, no, no time to, yeah, you, tonight, celebrate? Seminoles got the week off. They got the week off. regroup. Yep. Give their quarterback some extra rest. As actually Madison Little with the player of the game, perhaps Hayden Kosicki. Madison, take it away. All right, first of all, congrats on a huge win tonight. Thank you. So, what was going through your head when you kicked that field goal right there? Just another kick, just like practice. Just keep my head down, kick the ball. Simple. And what does this mean for you guys moving into not only Friday, but playoffs? playoff games afterwards i think it gives us like a huge confident boost because they're a good team and we beat them by one point but we still beat them so we're gonna go be with kaiva and we're gonna keep going on all right congratulations and great job tonight thank you good so much madison the kicker hayden kasicki he's a junior what a what a phenomenal way to win districts, coach! Oh yeah, I'm, I'm happy for the kid. You know, absolutely. That's the, you know, a lot of pressure there, and it, you know, it wasn't a chip shot, 35 yard field goal for a high school kicker. Well, uh, the, with the, this magnitude, the stakes of the game. Of the game. Yeah, you know, uh, just a tremendous job by him uh, coming in there and making that kick. You know, it's going to be interesting to see how Seminole responds when they lose. They respond very loud and proud. So whoever they get in the playoffs, beware, because Seminole. Is one of the hottest teams when it comes to playing in the playoffs. But, man, oh, man, tonight it's all about a Popka coach. Yeah, yeah, Popka really played well. Hey, both teams played well. It was, and it, yeah. And both teams had a chance to win the game, and uh, Popka came out on the end, and I said, who's going to have the ball last? You were right. You were right. I said, I don't know. <laughs> so it turned out that way. But uh, Another one-point victory for a Popka. Yeah. The, the, this is probably one of the closer series between two teams you can ever get. Yeah. Where all these games have been decided by yeah, and Apopka, four points or know, less. They, their district games, Lake Mary was close, Lake Brantley was close, you know, and but they found a way to win. You yep. know, and, and that's what good teams do. Good teams always find ways to win, and Apopka does so. And uh, we wish both teams best of luck in the playoffs. Yep. We'll, we'll see both of them hopefully meeting in the playoffs because we know it's going to be a great matchup. Yep. So it should be fun. Uh, playoffs. On the way in the state of Florida for high school football starting next week. But for Coach Del Fialco and I, we're going to sign off for our crew, Madison Little, Joey up on camera, Nick running the show. For Dave Del Fialco, myself, Alex Simardoni, so long and good night from Apopka High School. The Blue Darters edge out the Knolls 24.